Hi guys, this is Adam here with Adam L Photography and today we've got a, another product review for you. This is uh, more for the filmmakers. We'll be looking at this uh, three-axis uh, three brushless gimbal from uh, Kame TV. It's the, uh, the 7800 model. Picked this up um, about a week ago. I've had a, a fair bit of time to play with it and um, I'm here to give you my uh, thoughts, impressions and uh, advice on whether or not to pick one up or not. Um, now I went ahead and picked up the, uh, the pack that they're offering right now with the case and the stand built in. Uh, right now it's on the stand which you have to uh, uh, you have to build up uh, using a, an allen key which is included it doesn't take more than uh, say three or four minutes to put the stand together and the stand packs away nicely in the case one of the things about the stand though is that you do have to pull it apart all the joints and everything off in order to put it in the case so bear in mind that that's uh, that's one of those things that if you're moving around on location you're gonna have to uh, either keep the stand as is and carry it around or you're going to have to pull it apart, put it back in the case, move around, reassemble. So that's one little, uh, one little side thing there, but um, you'll get that with any stand, I guess. Now the gimbal itself is, uh, it's, uh, it comes like pre-built. It's got all the, uh, the PIDs uh, built into the, uh, into the system. So basically the camera knows uh, what, uh, sorry, the gimbal knows what it's got to go through. Uh, and it's all been pre-programmed. And it's designed basically to handle um, your mid-sized DSLRs. Uh, so basically things like uh, I've got the Nikon D750 on here with a 50mm lens, uh, your A7s from Sony, uh, just basically the mid-range sort of cameras is what's going to work really well with this. Um, construction wise it's built really well. Um, the wires are all pushed through the tubing which is a really nice uh, 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 advantage. I've seen some of the other gimbals uh, that uh, are in this kind of price range and they've got the wires sticking out everywhere which is something I wasn't really really uh, keen on getting into. The only real wires that are exposed, uh, just uh, a few of the, the connectors here, like for the battery, uh, that's exposed there. There's no casing for the battery. A uh, little couple of wires here on top, and also for the, uh, the joystick over here, the wires are mounted underneath uh, the joystick panel. So um, I'm very tempted actually to flip the joystick in a reverse, just because when it's sitting on the stand, it's actually sitting on the wires, which isn't the, um, isn't the greatest design uh, uh, feat I've come across. So. Um, First impressions of the gimbal. Okay, uh, you, you see a lot online when you're looking at uh, reviews and uh, and sort of tutorials on using the gimbal, and everyone talks about balancing your camera. It's extremely important to balance your camera. If it's not balanced, it's just not going to work properly. Uh, whether it's slightly off balance, you're going to get like a vibration through the motors as they're working to compensate, or if it's completely off balance and the gimbal will just swing out of uh, out of control and on different axes. Now. Because it's a, a three-axis gimbal, you've got to balance your camera in three axes. So you've got this axis here, which as you can see right now, my camera is not actually fully balanced. It's a little bit off. But that axis there where the, the camera should stay in the position which you place it. And see how mine's falling back a little bit, which means it's a little bit back heavy. It needs a very minor adjustment. Um, so it just needs to be completely balanced on that axis first. Now you can do that by adjusting... Um, the support bar here uh, for the cage, that'll help uh, keep the camera more balanced. I've compressed mine more towards the center just so that it's, uh, um, the camera's like really wedged in more directly between the motors, not sitting low. It seems to find it's got uh, a better way, it balances a lot easier that way. Um, you can also use the, uh, what they call the quick release plate they've got on, built into the 7800, which wasn't in the other models. And you can adjust that by just moving this little quick release switch and sliding it back and forth a little bit just to find that perfect balance. Um, as you need it. So that's the one uh, axis you've got to balance. The next axis you've got to balance is this crossbar here. So it needs to be balanced so that it's not tipping um, either way. As you can see that's pretty close to perfect right there. Um, and that bar should just hold its position when you, when you release it. So that's your second axis of balance. The third axis of balance you've got to go through is up here on this top bar here. Oh, sorry, I just switched that on. We'll turn that off for a sec. Okay, that top bar here. And that controls the uh, the yaw, the, the, the pitch, the swing of this, uh, of the unit. So basically when you're holding it and you twist sideways, that bar will try to stay perpendicular to, uh, uh, along this axis. I can never remember which one's which, but anyway. So you've got to adjust that as well. Now this gets really nitpicking and piddly because basically you're running off of these little Allen screws. So um, you've got four Allen screws that hold these brackets on here and uh, down here as well. And you've got to adjust those and then move, move the bar along slightly within that bracket and a lot of times you're talking increments of millimeters not not uh, centimeters and once you release these uh, screws for example on this crossbar this whole unit will tip forward because when you're balancing of course you have to have your camera on as it's going to be in your shot so you've got the weight of the camera built into that 
and this whole unit here will just tip forward. So it's really nitpicking and niddly. Um, if you get the opportunity, balance it with somebody so someone can be sitting there holding uh, the frame while, and slightly adjusting it while you're tightening and loosening the screws. But when you're doing it by yourself, it gets, it gets really tedious. So um, be prepared to go through a learning curve when it comes to balancing this thing. I've been at it for a week. Um, basically, uh, when I first got the unit, rather than run out and try to play with it, uh, I balanced it and then put a different lens on, a different camera, rebalanced it, pulled it apart and rebalanced it and just went through it over and over again because most important is I don't want to be on, on location trying to balance this thing and sitting around for you know, an hour trying to get it together. You really want to be able to put that together and get a camera balanced in 10 or 15 minutes. And to do that, you're going to have to put some time and effort in unless you're just naturally gifted that way, which I am not. Um, so once you get everything balanced, a uh, little switch on the back, you flick that on, powers up the gimbal. The gimbal looks for its, uh, uh, its sort of setting position once it's in full set position. Then you can just take it off the frame, again, a little bit niddly. And then you've got your gimbal in hand. Now on the back of the joystick here, you've got uh, the little joystick button you can find here. You can hit that once and that'll put it in the first mode, which basically, let me just uh, get that back on center. Okay. And with this first mode, it's going to basically slowly track your movement. So if you tilt the gimbal up, the camera will also tilt up. If you tilt the gimbal down, the camera will also tilt down. And same left and right as you pan. So the camera is basically going to follow your movements. It's quite fluid. It's very smooth. If you get that two clicks, what it's going to do now is it's going to follow your movements when you go left and right along your panning axis. But it's going to hold its axis as you tilt the the gimbal up and down. So you're not going to get the camera panning upwards or downwards. And the third motion you can put it into is a triple click, three clicks like that. And now it's going to hold its axis on both the vertical and the horizontal. So those are the three built-in modes that come with this. Now the other thing you can put with this joystick as well is you've got the full controls in all of these modes to uh, basically pan, tilt, and you can do those simultaneously as well takes a little get used to. And that's an analog stick now, so that's uh, basically it's a little bit pressure sensitive, so you can, uh, the more, you, the harder you push it to the side, the faster it's gonna do those moments, uh, movements. But um, it is quite, uh, it's quite sensitive, so it's gonna move quite quickly. Um, and as I'm uh, being told, I haven't actually gone in to do it myself, you can uh, load the uh, software to adjust those PID settings. There's PID settings on the, uh, the gimbal and, I'm sure, and I think you can slow all that down so you can slow the sensitivity down if you want to do more like uh, very slow and soft looking pans and uh, set, your, um, set your analog stick in a different way. So let's switch that off for a moment. Okay. Um, one of the things you're really going to need with this um, is an external monitor. You, you're not going to be able to sit there and follow through the back of the LCD of the camera. That's not going to work. Um, an HD monitor will be fantastic if you've got a nice big say seven inch screen with an HD monitor so you can really see uh, your exposures and your focuses and all that sort of stuff that's going to be great personally for me I much prefer to use my um, my Atmos Ninja 2 which is uh, an external recorder here which allows me to record everything in uh, in ProRes so I'm getting a, a lot higher um, uh, you know I'm getting the 10-bit color and a lot more information going into every shot, which allows me to do a little bit more uh, work in post. And also, if you're shooting with something like Final Cut, uh, editing with Final Cut, um, you don't have to transcode all your media. So it's going to uh, save you a lot of time and frustration while you're editing. So that's what I use there. I've just basically hooked that up with an HDMI cable straight down through into the camera. Now, bear in mind with your HDMI cable, you're going to want to have one of those uh, a 90 degree adapter or a 90 degree uh, head on the um, HDMI cable that goes into your camera. Uh, I'm not sure about all the cameras, but with the, uh, the Nikon D750, uh, a regular HDMI cable will stick out and it, uh, any kind of contact with the, the frame of this, uh, even the slightest frame uh, contact, will, uh, will send the gimbal off into uh, make, it, uh, make it get a bit jittery and it won't, it'll try to fight and compensate as it feels that friction from the cable. So even the slightest uh, contact will, can really throw off the smoothness of your shot. So um, yeah, look, that's basically my take on the uh, the KMTV 7800. Now I've looked at uh, the the Mov, uh, Movi and um, while balancing that looks like a hell of a lot easier with all those quick release uh, um, sort of uh, latches that's built onto it for all those different axes. You don't need to be using your Allen key. Um, 
that that's a major bonus as far as time saving goes. I personally I don't think it's worth the extra money. You're talking uh, this entire kit with the 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 semi hard case. It's, it's a bit soft. You won't want to pack that into a, a plane track. But you get the semi hard case. You get the um, the stand and you get the gimbal all built in with a single battery and charger for uh, at the moment it's uh, 1380 US dollars so um, great bang for buck as far as that goes uh, what you're achieving out of your shots is is uh, just as good in, in every respect I can see as uh, some of the more expensive gimbals but um, where, where you're missing out it's just those tiny little things you know like uh, uh, you've got a little bit more exposed elements on the unit itself and of course you've got those allen keys you've got to you know really really fiddly when you're balancing your camera so if you're doing it more um, getting out there on your own schedule and shooting stuff uh, in your own schedule then yeah this is fantastic once you get better uh, get used to balancing get through that learning curve it's going to get a lot easier but uh, at the start don't expect to just pull this out of the box and whack your camera on and run and go you're gonna you're gonna take a little bit of time uh, pulling out hair trying to get this uh, damn thing to balance. But once it's balanced, it's incredible. It's yeah, it's amazing what you can uh, you can uh, you can achieve with just uh, this one rig. I mean, it really it compensates for so many things. Now, just one last point while we're here on uh, talking about this thing, um, because of the way you have to hold this unit out from your body a little bit. You, you basically, you're in this kind of pose. Um, even though the unit with the camera on it may only be about four to five kilos, at the monitor you go say six kilos, um, you're holding it off of your body. So it's really talking against your shoulders and your upper back. So uh, be prepared to, uh, to experience a little bit of pain while you're shooting. So I highly recommend doing some push-ups and, uh, and getting, uh, getting comfortable carrying uh, carrying weight out from your body. Um, isometric weight uh, training would be uh, highly recommended. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not, um, it's not uh, a very comfortable uh, item to hold for any extended period of time. The video I'm gonna show you now is just a, um, a recent video shoot I did with uh, a local blues artist, Dave Rolston. Uh, this is a, a one take we did with me walking backwards unassisted through a crowded street. Uh, just to show you how smooth this camera was. Now, when I shot this, I didn't actually have it in complete balance. I couldn't quite find the, the point and we were running low on time. So I just went ahead and shot with it just slightly out of balance. So there is a slight jitter from here to uh, from time to time, but it's incredibly smooth. Um, but yeah, just in that one video take, which was uh, just under four minutes, uh, you really start to feel the muscles burn. So uh, yeah, get in shape before you, uh, you grab this bad boy. Um, yeah, that's about all there is really to say about it. Uh, no buyer's remorse. I'm pretty happy with it. So if you're looking to uh, pick up a three-axis gimbal, you don't want to spend an insane amount of money and you don't mind fiddling a lot and trying to figure out how to balance the damn thing, the Kane TV 7800 is, uh, is a really good bang for buck. This is Adam L. Happy shooting. Just live life like you ain't afraid to fall. Help somebody else. You gotta help somebody else. A meaning to live. You don't need a reason to give, but don't ever say never. But don't ever give up. But don't look for love. Just be love.